Now, I didn't know this hyper-realistic fur was actually possible, but also this. But on top of that, I didn't know they were so easy and so quick to make. And so here we are today. So let's make some realistic fur in Photoshop first. But this fur even has hairy edges. Now this works on any shape and even text if you want. And just to demonstrate, I've got here a rounded off rectangle. So the very first thing you need to do is to make a group in the layers window and then drop your object into it. With the group folder selected, we're going to add a drop shadow effect that applies to this entire group. The settings you use aren't actually too strict today. You can experiment and just choose whatever works best for you and your project. But we're going to add two drop shadows and you can add a new one just by clicking that plus icon to the right of the text. Now for me, I've got one shadow that's pretty tight to the shape and then another shadow that's kind of further afield. So next we want to add a bevel and emboss. The style is in a bevel and the technique is smooth. The blend modes below are overlay and then multiply and the rest is just subjective to you. So we now have this sort of effect on our text or shape or whatever we're working on. But now we need to bring on an image of some fur or even an animal if you've got one. But try and make sure your image is high quality and high resolution. Also, make sure to drag it on top of all layers that's outside of the group folder. Resize it and then press command option G on a Mac. But if you're working on PC, it's going to be control option G. Our fur is masked onto our object very nicely indeed. But we're not done yet. We need to add those realistic hairs on the edge of our fur. Now you can come back into the effects here and make adjustments whenever you want to. And you can also move the image around like so. But now come into the group section and highlight your object layer and then click the add icon right here. Now we can go ahead and rename this something like outside hair or fur or something like that. And we technically should rename all layers, but hey, Sometimes I'm just lazy, especially on these smaller projects. So when ready, click the brush tool and then make sure to first click legacy brushes and then hit OK. In the brush drop down menu, search for grass and navigate down to June grass, which kind of looks like this. And in this menu, deselect color dynamics and also transfer. And in the Shape Dynamics menu, change the angle jitter to Direction. When we use the Brush tool on the edges, Photoshop's going to apply the fur in accordance to the image we have, which looks really, really cool. But for maximum effects, you can use smaller and different sizes of the brush. And also in the Brush menu, you can flick the X and Y axes to change the direction of the brush shape. And after some time, you'll end up with a realistic looking fur object, which you can apply to text, shapes, and just about everything else. Nice, but let's go ahead and make our own beer or soda can in a matter of seconds. For this, grab a good quality image of a can or a bottle that's blank. But if it has water droplets on it, you're gonna have a maximum effect on this design. So press Command or Control J to duplicate the can and then hide the top layer. Now you can bring on any design you like, but here's my quick slapdash craft beer design Satori style. Resize it down with Command and Control T and make sure it's actually below the top hidden layer. And then lower the opacity so you can see where you're placing it on your design. And on my design, I don't want the graphic over the top edge of the can and also at the very bottom section. I want these left as metallic. Anything that bleeds over this area, you can just mask it off or simply just use the eraser tool and carefully rub it out. And so here it is with the section erased and let's whack up the opacity back to 100%. Right click the layer and also make a clip and mask. Now I'm sure you're gonna agree, this doesn't look too realistic right now. So let's make the hidden layer visible and change the blend mode of that layer to something that works best for your design or your project. And in this instance here, I'm liking the look of hard light, but of course, we can also lower the opacity to lessen the impact of this effect. And it's the first effect. Now make a clipping mask of this one as well. But we're not done yet. 
we can play around with the blend mode of the design layer itself. And for me here, I'm actually liking Linear Burn. This seems to really emphasize the droplets and bring out the realism on this design. We can also add adjustment layers to this, such as curves. And it might just be a case of seeing what works best for your design in this instance. Maybe something like an adjustment layer of brightness and contrast or hue and saturation. But yeah, using adjustment layers is really good here because it's non-destructive and you can just hide or delete them whenever you want. And if you want to see other cool things you can make with graphic design skills, just click a video on screen. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace. Thank you.